Um, when I was a kid, I had a dad who led tons of people. And you can you just picture this right now. He had, he was a military guy with a lot of condecorations, big old stuff hanging here on the side, an amazing man. And one of the things that really struck me from him was that there were people in his organization, his managers and his manager's managers, that would tell him, hey, I want you to come with me. And I was like, what? You're going to just take him somewhere? And you're going to take my dad? Why? Yeah, I want to take him. And I also heard other people in his organization saying, I will follow your dad wherever he goes. And I was like, wow, okay. That's too much. And so he's going to run off a cliff? Yeah, great. Just go behind him, right? So um, that, that really struck me really deep. I, I, I wondered why. Why do people take you and say, I want you in my team and take you somewhere else? And then on the other side, they also say, I'll follow you wherever you go. I wondered why. Why, why do these things happen? So I, I spent quite a bit of time through my working life, trying to figure out these things and, and what makes a good leader and what makes a guy that's amazing in a team. So if I'm going to say something, and I'm sure everybody here has had to, is working or will have to work in a team at some point in your life, so you're not exempt from this rule. You're definitely going to do it. I'm sorry, <laughs> even if you don't like it. But I'm going to show you, and I want to show you some of the things that I've experienced and some of the principles that I've put together to make these, team, these, these teams go from ordinary to amazing. So if you see that picture, there are two nice guys on there, um, and you can see me in the background. And we're both concentrated, right? We're looking in a direction. We're, we're doing something that we want to do. We're, we're really concentrating on something where we want to go. And... Um, I, I, I really like this, this way of trying to see, okay, how, how do I work in a team? How do I lead a team? So what I'm going to tell you today are principles for this, and they just come out of my experience that I've put together for several years, and I hope you find yourself reflected in some of them. But let's start off, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to first tell you a story about a team that I've led and I've put together. And the second thing is we're going to talk about these principles. So I really like what Babe Ruth said. Um, and by the way, this speech is going to be about partly about baseball. So um, Babe Ruth, great guy for that. So um, he said, um, the, the, the teams uh, or, or the, the way a team plays is really reflected not on the individual things that those people do, but on the collective things. Uh, joint approach of all of them. So I really like what he said in this, and to demonstrate that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this team. So I've put together a team. Um, we play here in Regensburg, and we, we play in mixed teams, so we're um, men and women. That's pretty much the team right there. And um, uh, well, there, there are 16 people. So out of those 16 people, 13 men, three women, Pretty interesting. And the next thing to make it a little bit more difficult is we have a really big age span. So we have guys and women in the team that are 20 years old, and our oldest person in the team is 60. So you can see what that brings together is complexity. I mean, different interests from, from being at the university to, hey, I'm 60 years old, man, I can't run, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So, um, it, it, it's complex. It's different levels of, of, of where you're in your life and what you're doing and, and what makes, makes it fun for you and what not. So, um, I, I'm sure our 60-year-old says after a game it's not fun, so everything's hurting. And um, you might be saying right now, well, that's pretty easy. Uh, we can go through this. Um, it's not so complicated. So, okay, I'll make it more difficult. Um, in this team, 10 players have never played before. So you can imagine, you're trying to explain rules, you're trying to explain things, and the other one's saying, like, what? I didn't get that. Why do I have to run there? And why do I have to hit that? Okay, we get through that. You're still saying, fine, easy. I'll get through that. I'll explain them the rules. I'll put some videos on YouTube, and we're done. It gets more complicated. Out of those people, we have 10 different countries. So that means we have 10 different nationalities. And okay, if you would say everybody comes from the same country and everybody, okay, or Latin America, everybody comes from that same area, no. But we have Brazilians, we have Americans, we have Germans, we have a Turkish guy, we have even a Greek guy, you know? So you can imagine this, yeah? Um, 
And then you're saying, well, fine, I can get through that. I'm a multicultural master of disaster. I can go through all of these things. I'll talk to everybody in their own cultural language and their, yeah, whatever. It gets more difficult. We don't have a common language. So we don't even have English as a common language. So when you say something, you end up saying something like in three different languages, somebody else translates it, and then they, they'll maybe throw in a dialect in there or something. And, okay, things happen, but this very complex. So look at this complex situation. We have this great, great span of things that are happening, and it gets complicated. But let me show you what we've done with that team. So in this team, we started off playing in a league. This league has been running for about seven years. So we're the new guys. A bunch of crazy random people that don't speak a common language and have a bunch of old people and young people and whatever. And we start playing in this league. So we're new. We don't have any experience. We don't know how to play together. Uh, we're learning things. So the first year, we said, okay, 2016, this is our year. We're going to start. What is our goal? Please, God, let's not finish last. Yeah? <laughs> so there are 10 teams in the league. We ended up in seventh place. Oh, we're fine with that, yeah? Not bad, first year, great, awesome. Second year, 2017, we ended up in sixth place. Hey, improvement, not bad. But in this year, a lot of things happened. We had fluctuations in the team, we had people who left, moved, the, moved to other parts of the country, um, so we had to restructure, we had to you know, get people together. We made a lot of mistakes, we tried out things. And to say the truth, my goal as a coach was, hey, let's stop, let's, let's end up in the top four teams. We didn't make it, we failed. We didn't do that. But it's okay. We still have another year after that. So 2018 comes around, right? And we've restructured some things, we tried some new things out, we trained, we did a, a lot of different things. And then we said, okay, I said as a coach, our team, maybe we finish in the top three. What do you guys think? You know what the team said? They said, no, we're gonna finish first. We're going to win this championship, and we're going to do it. I'm like, ah, oh, man, okay, yeah, phew, you know. Uh, it's quite a bit. Uh, it's a lot to do. We have to do a lot of training. We have to do a lot of things. But they said that. And you know what happens? We go to the final. We beat the best team in the league that has played 10 out of, yeah, out of 10 finals, and they have won five out of those 10 finals, and we play against them, and we win. Yeah? So everybody's excited, hype, you know, yeah, let's go do a lot of stuff. We can win next year. Nobody's going to beat us. Awesome. Very nice. Feeling in the team, amazing. Remember these things. We're going to go into that in a second. If you look at a, sorry, am I? Yep. Uh, if, if we look at, at, at a scale from what's visible to what's hidden, and you're on this side of the visible scale, what you just saw right now, or what I just showed you, are the outcomes. Things that you can see, things that are there as a result. I can see it. That's the outcome. That's the result that I'm getting. But what happens? There are layers behind this. These layers, one layer behind, would be actions. To get to that outcome, I have to do something. I'm not going to just get muscles because God gave me muscles and then I'm, you know, through evolution or whatever. I just have tons of muscles. No, it's not going to happen that way. You have to go to the gym. You have to take an action to do that. It's part of it. And behind that, which is the secret, what I want to share with you today, uh, to take these teams from something ordinary to something amazing, and not only if you lead them, but also if you're part of a team, is what's behind the actions, and those would be the principles. These principles give you basically the basis of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. So I'm going to share those with you right now. I have seven that I've, I've put together. And the first one I really like a lot. The first one, you have to start with yourself. You have to know how to lead yourself. Who are you? How do you react in situations? How do you react under stress? How do you react when you're happy? How do, how do you do things? What are your values? What are your sets of values? So a leader or a team or a person that comes in a team is not going to be paying attention to just because he says, yeah, great, I'm the leader. It has to start with you. That's the first step. You have to lead yourself. As a second part, now is influenced by character, not authority. How do you set an example? So think about something. 
when you do something, do people pay more attention to it than when you say it? Or is it the other way around? When you say something, maybe people, yeah, fine, okay, good, he said it. I know it with my kids. But if I do it and I set that example, it stays in people's heads. So by setting the example and influencing in this way, you're getting to another place where you're able to show who you are because you already know yourself, you're leading yourself, and then you're taking it and bringing it in into that team. In our team specifically, we have had these challenges. Uh, we have had people who had to look at how they influence each other. How do they do things? And um, to understand this, um, I do this also very much as, as a leader and also as a team member. How am I doing these things? What am I doing inside of these teams? And how am I showing that character that I'm, doing, that I'm, that I'm bringing forth? Next one. And I think many of you might complete this with another part of the sentence, but um, influenced by character and not authority. A lot of you might say, I listen to reply. Yeah? So if we're in a team and I hear what you're saying, you will be taken care of on two different levels, intellectually and emotionally. I'm listening to what you have to say, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to agree to that. First, I'm listening to it. I'm understanding where you're coming from. I try to lay that trust. What is happening between you and me? How, what are you telling me? What are you trying to communicate to me? And I'm trying to take that into account to the things that are happening in that team. Um, this also happens under our teammates. Um, we have had teammates that have had problems with each other. We have been able to solve those things. We've been trying to also maybe make our communication better through, throughout this, and just by listening, listening to try to understand. The next one is giving power to others. Um, this is something that's really interesting. How did you learn how to walk? You learned how to walk because not somebody just carried you the whole time, you would still be being carried, and you did it because somebody gave you that power to do it. Hey, go, try it. Do your thing. Try to expand on that. Try to see how you're going to do it. Try to learn from your experience. If we as leaders and also as team members don't give the opportunity to somebody else to try to live that and to try to do that, they will never learn. And by giving power to others, we're also freeing ourselves from quite a lot of things. At the beginning of, 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 of that team, when we, when we started it off, I made a huge mistake. I wanted to do everything. Oh, I'll send the emails and I'll get a sponsor and I'll do the WhatsApp group and we'll do this and I'll, I'll do everything. The moment changed when I gave responsibilities and I asked people, hey, would you like to do that? I think you're pretty good at that. Would you like to try that out? People started taking ownership of what was going around them and they started doing things, giving back into the team with the power that was given to them. The next one would be unity, and I have a, a beautiful example for this. Um, with unity, I mean not that you're going to go and work in these teams, and that all of a sudden, you're going to, they're going to be your family. I'm going to be with them 24 hours a day, and we're going to go eat together, and we're going to go shower together, and then we're going to you know, wash the car together, and we're going to go shopping together. No. And I'm not asking you to, to unite to your team in this way. But... It is a thing of how you do things together. For example, in our team, we have moments uh, during, during the year and summer, and we'll go and grill together. We bring our families, and everybody's joking around, and you're creating bonds. These are the people you're going to have to see for quite a while, and you're going to have to try to understand them, and you're going to try to also unite with them. And I have a, an amazing example. And the first game in 2018 that we had, there was this one guy, and he cooked for about 60 people on our first game. We're like, what are you doing? He brought food for our whole team, for the opposite team, and for the spectators. He brought tons of food. And that was his way of showing his unity, of showing what he's bringing to the whole, to the whole team. Mistakes, growth, and curiosity. Remember that I told you on our second season, we didn't really achieve that goal that we wanted to achieve? We make mistakes. We, we, we still do mistakes. We still do these kind of things that are, that are annoying and don't get us where we need to go. So when we're, when we're looking at this, we're trying to challenge ourselves to change and to understand things in a better way. 
Um, if, if everything would run perfect, everything would be boring. Yeah? If, if we just go in this idle speed of non-change, things would be getting really boring at some point. You would win all the games, and everything is fun, and everything is fine, and then fun is not fun anymore. So it's good to have these losses, these setbacks, to make you realign again. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you thinking about? How can you make it better? Is there a way that we can choose things? Can we change people on the field and change them in a different way? From this, you learn. That's just about the only thing that you can say about this. And the last one is excellence over perfection. If I would say what I just did right now or you know, this, this TEDx uh, logo right here. Is that perfect for you? Everybody would have a different opinion. Perfection is in the eye of the beholder, is often said. But do we all think that something is perfect at the same time? No, we don't. But by putting excellence, we're giving the best we have in the situation we have in the best way that we can. So you're not putting yourself under excellence, then you're not doing this but you will never be perfect, and perfect perfection will never be reached. For humans, we don't try to be perfect. In our team, that's not our goal. But we're trying to give the best we can in the situation we can. Maybe you have seen these principles and you say, well, good, I do a couple of things here in, in, in my teams and I do some of these things for myself. In others, maybe you say, ooh, I've never really heard of that and that kind of scares me and I'm gonna just leave it there. But with these things, I think that you can make changes in any team. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be sports. It can be in business. It can be in your daily life. It can be in your, with your family. It can be with your friends. It can be with whatever you're going to do. Because remember, you're going to have to work in a team. This picture right here is actually one of my favorite. This was right at the end of that when we won that championship. And you can see the emotion. You can see the, 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 the feeling of, of the one guy with his mouth screaming and, and the others coming towards him. And you can feel the emotion of this moment. I'm sure that you will have to go through these things. I'm sure that you will reach at some point these kind of challenges. And I'm sure that you're going to make it. And another thing that I'm going to guarantee you is it doesn't matter Wherever you are in your life, you're going to have to work in a team. Things are becoming so complex that, that, that being able to get to a result is not anymore a thing of one person. You will have to work together to get results. Things are getting so complex, and you see it already in situations like in hospitals. Who has been able to go to a hospital and get a diagnosis? How many people look at you? Oh, that doctor and the internist, and let's bring this other guy in. And another one comes in and says, oh, my God, what do you have? And the other one is laughing. It's completely different views on that problem. Because that problem has not been able to be identified by one only person. So they have to work in multi-task teams. And the last thing I want to just leave you with is this sentence. Success in a team is not really defined as a one-size-fits-all. The people in the team, leaders and members, come in all shapes and sizes and with all kinds of skills and characteristics. But the remarkable thing is to come together and transform from something ordinary to something amazing. And I hope you like that, and thank you very much.